Hi, my name is Daryl Anderson. I'm part of the Yamaha Drums design team. I joined the team a little over 13 years ago, and um, we're going to dive into some more detail about Yamaha hardware. When we talk about Yamaha hardware, we're talking about the all-encompassing group of marching, percussion, and drum set hardware. Not just the pedals and the cymbal stands, but every component that goes into making an instrument. Um, all of those pieces are come together as a recipe for a great sounding instrument that's going to last for generations. Some people may think, Yamaha makes a ton of stuff. How could they make decent drum gear? Actually, the opposite's true. Because we make so much stuff, and Yamaha is such a manufacturing powerhouse, we can cross over technology from different departments and make our drum equipment better. In the case of Yamaha Motors, for example, metallurgy, uh, science, plating technology is shared and adapted onto our Yamaha hardware. Some of the design philosophies that we carry through when we discuss next generation hardware is uh, number one, simplicity. No frills, it works. If you need to remember anything about Yamaha hardware, it's that it works and there's not a whole lot of bells and whistles that could go wrong in the process. Also, convenience. Yamaha's design philosophy for hardware is the Yamaha system hardware. This is revolving around a 7 8 inch diameter tube that's common among many hardware components. They're easily interchangeable. This is a concept Yamaha started back in the 70s, and we kept it going because it's a solution, not just for acoustic drums, but also for your concert percussion and DTX. You can mix and match all of this hardware, and in the case of an educator, you can use this hardware for all of your needs. Playability. The hardware and the drums come together as a relationship, and Yamaha does this the best in the industry, creating hardware that's super dependable and complements the instrument for a, the best playing experience. Finally, durability. We design hardware that should last a lifetime. When we design hardware for today, often we look at what we've done in the past. And some of those hardware pieces that we find in our artist uh, hardware trunks or that we see in our backline uh, partners, that hardware still holds up because we build it to last. In order to make hardware that lasts for generations, we test and test again. This is one of the hallmarks of Yamaha quality. Saltwater test to ensure that the plating lasts in extreme environments. In the case of a pedal, we have endurance testing with multiple repeated strokes and vibrational tests. A quick recap of some of the hardware innovations over the years, some that we take for granted in the industry today are um, the hideaway symbol boom arm, for example. That was a Yamaha invention back in the 70s and has since been adopted by nearly every drum company in the industry. The resin ball and socket tom holder, that was something Yamaha created back in the 70s and it's carried on, not just for drum set, but for concert percussion and for DTX. Since this tom holder has been carried on and we've made subtle improvements over the years, your drums from the mid 70s and your drums today are using very similar compatible hardware. And in addition, the Yes Tom mount. This was a nodal point mounted Tom holder. And once again, subtle changes making improvements over the years. Yes, Yes 2, and now the Yes 3 that's featured on the hybrid maple. Finally, Crosstown hardware, advanced lightweight hardware. When we looked at the lightweight hardware market, we asked ourselves, how can we make this better? How can we make improvements? So what we did, we got every piece of lightweight hardware we could in the market, and we stacked it up against some prototypes. Actually, I made a chart, an angle chart, to, de to determine at what point is this cymbal stand going to topple over with a reasonably heavy cymbal on top. So we got all the other stands that we could find, put them all at the same height, put the same symbol on top, oriented the legs in exactly the same way, 
and we measured at what point is this symbol stand just going to fall. And what we designed was a channel shaped leg, an all aluminum stand, and it's built from the ground up. This is a brand new design that's meant to be the lightest in the, in the industry and be the most stable by far. Not to mention the sonic benefit of the aluminum hardware. We heard it in the shop and our artists confirmed it as well when we got it into their hands that those beautiful symbols that they know so well when they put it on the aluminum stand had elegant buoyancy to it that they've never noticed before that was more dry on a steel stand. When I say that Yamaha hardware is designed to last, uh, we sometimes are surprised by the stories we hear when we're on the road doing research. In one instance, we met a person who was on a cruise ship gig, and when they were docked at the port, his hardware fell into the water. And it just so happened that they had a dive crew on board that could assist to retrieve it. After being submerged in the salt water, they retrieved the hardware, cleaned it up, and then he went out and played the cruise ship gig with no problem. So as a player, educator, or student, when you use Yamaha hardware, it'll help you get through the gig and you could trust that it's gonna last. My name is Daryl Anderson. I'm with Yamaha Drums. We're gonna talk a little bit about how Yamaha creates musical instruments. The philosophy Yamaha uses when making musical instruments starts with sound. Sound is the priority. We want to make instruments that sound as good as possible. We always strive to move forward with our technology for sound. And uh, also, by making wonderful sounding instruments, we hope to inspire more music makers. If we can make instruments that create beautiful sounds for the player and also for the listener, we believe that comes full circle. Finally, quality on a global scale. From a boutique maker's point of view, you could get some cool lugs and a nice shell and make a great drum. But to do so on a professional level at a global scale is no small feat. This is something Yamaha does very well. To give you a little summary of some Yamaha drums history, Yamaha Drums was founded in 1967 in Hamamatsu, Japan. This is the footprint and home base of Yamaha. Later in the mid 70s, Takashi Hagiwara, known as the godfather of Yamaha drums, helped to create a partnership with Sakai Rhythm in Osaka. This began the golden age of Yamaha drums. In 1984, we started making concert and marching percussion using the same high quality manufacturing process as the drum set shells. This high quality formula for making a consistent and strong drum shell was especially important in marching percussion to hold up to the high tension of that style of playing. In 2008, Yamaha developed the Drum Lab in Hamamatsu, Japan to start producing the PHX drums. In 2010, in the new factory in Hangzhou, China, this is now the place for all high-end drum manufacturer for Yamaha, including acoustic drums, marching, and percussion. Let's talk a little bit about how a Yamaha drum is born. It all starts with the acquisition of high quality material that is responsibly sourced. The wood material, the veneer, is stored in an environmentally controlled facility before it's scrutinized over for imperfections by trained staff. Once that material is cleared for use, it goes out to the floor and each piece is cross laminated for strength, short grain and long grain. Also, each piece is then specifically selected for its role in the drum shell. A piece is selected for the outside ply, the inner ply, and the center. This is especially critical in the case of our hybrid shells. Next, the seams are cut. Yamaha cuts the seams at a bias, at a diagonal. This is in order to set up our next process, which is nicknamed kachikomi, in Japanese meaning hammering or banging. These diagonal seams are wedged into the mold and then one end is hammered in order to force the seams tightly together. 
the analogy I like to draw is similar to hammering a nail into a piece of wood. It starts off kind of loose and low pitched and as you drive the nail deeper into the wood, it gets higher pitched and feels more solid. This is what the drum shell builder is listening for as he's banging the plywood. Next, an airbag is lowered into the center. This is in order to ensure a consistent and uniform cylinder. Um, in other manufacturing techniques where it's a series of jaws expanding toward the inside of the shell, this leaves gaps and therefore an inconsistent shell. But with the air seal system, the entire shell is under uniform pressure. That whole package under pressure then goes into a gigantic microwave oven. This microwave cures the glue very quickly. Then the drum shell is hydraulically pressed from the mold, comes out warm to the touch, smooth surface, a perfect cylinder, and even at this stage is already producing a musical tone. From there, the shell goes through numerous steps of hand craftsmanship, including sanding, bearing edge cutting and finishing, also the paint process. These are all done with a human touch. In our Yamaha facilities, we strike a nice balance between automated systems for precision and consistency and also the hand craftsmanship that's necessary for building a quality instrument. Yamaha tests for quality again and again. In the case of a drum shell, we'll test for the veneer and how well it's glued together. We'll put it in environmental chambers to simulate extremely dry, cold environments extremely hot, humid climates to make sure that no matter where it goes in the world, this drum is going to be performing at its highest level. The Yamaha process was established long ago, and we continue to keep it that way until this day. In this brand new facility, we were able to make our R&D efforts come to life. Yamaha has production facilities all over the globe. It's the company of origin, not necessarily the country of origin. That makes the difference. As a member of the research and development team, we have a process. And we work together with our artist community to create new instruments. We don't just grab some parts off the shelf and grab some wood and make such and such custom and say, OK, artists, go out and play this. That's not how we do things. We work together with the artists to create instruments. We'll start by brainstorming some prototypes and getting in a room with the artists. So if we could uh, evaluate with sometimes 50 or 100 people, when we see all of this feedback, we know we're on the right track. Yamaha works with some of the most amazing artists in the world. And we are lucky to be able to interact with these people to collaborate on future instruments. We have Artists ranging from heavy metal to country to funk. Uh, in the case of recording custom, for example, this is not a genre specific instrument. This is an instrument that is global and can be played from you know, Slayer with Paul Bostaff to David Garibaldi and Tower of Power. Part of my job in the R&D group is to take all of the artist input put it into measurable quantitative data where we could find our direction and figure out a way to make the next generation of drums and hardware. In 2010, devastating floods hit Nashville and submerged touring equipment for many artists. Our good friend and drum artist Dave McAfee had his drums underwater for about a week before he could gain access to the facility. Finally, when he could find his drums and open up the road cases, he was dumping water out like a watering can. But he asked for our advice. We told him to dry it out. And he gave a chrome a little once over. And they were OK. But then he called us again and said, you know what? The drums are OK, but frankly, they smell. So we advised him, go ahead and soak the drums a second time in clean water to leach out the impurities of the flood water. He did that. After a quick once over on the chrome and a little cleaning, 
Dave was able to go back on the road with those drums, and now that kit has been selected to be on display in the Nashville Country Music Hall of Fame. And just like you, the artist, educator, working on your craft, we, in turn, are working on our craft of making better musical instruments each day. So once again, thank you for your support.